Hi folks, and if you're interested in spraying your own car, then you can do this. It's not rocket science or even brains parts of your car. It is fairly straightforward and easy to do, as long as you follow the instructions and guidelines that are provided with the tools and the products. If you're interested in building your own paint board like this one for do-it-yourself purposes, then have a look on my YouTube channel because I have about five videos explaining on how we've built this. If you're interested in paint guns, and paint, then I have another two videos explaining exactly that. So if you're interested in spraying your own car, stay tuned, because in this video we're going to work on what we have here in front of us. And this is the final product of preparing and painting a Lotus Elise sill. Hi folks, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to paint the sill of the Lotus Elise. So guys, uh, before we actually start doing the work, uh, I'm going to take you through all the steps that we will be doing in this video. I have right here a brand new cell of the Lotus Elise, and you've seen me in one of my other videos when we removed the old cell from the Lotus Elise. Well, this time we'll have to paint the new cell before we mount it back on the car. So uh, this will take a little bit of work because we have multiple steps to take. The first thing is that we need to wash it down because it has dust on it. You know, I've, I used it before, I trial fitted it on the car, so it has all kind of debris and crap on it. So we need to get that one up first. Then I will wet sand it, and probably with a grid of 1200 to 1500, so it's a bit dull. And then I will put it in the paint boot where we will put a high built uh, surfacer on it. We let it dry for about an hour or so. And then we take it back out of the paint boot and we will wet sand it again with a grit of 1500. We let it dry, we take all the dust off, we will degrease it and then we put it back in the paint boot, tag rag it uh, one last time in the paint boot and then we will actually put the base coat on, which is the first coat uh, of color. Then we let it uh, sit for its flash time and the flash time is the time it needs for the solvents to evaporate. That's going to be a few minutes only. Then we'll put the next uh, base coat on and potentially I might have to put a third one on, but it all depends a bit. I don't think that will be necessary. And then finally, uh, when that is all dried up, we're going to tag rag it again and then I'm going to put two to three coats of clear coat on it. Uh, and then we should be done. So this is a bit what we're going to do. Now there's a couple of things before you start painting that you need to keep in mind preheat the paint boot and anything that you're going to paint warm it up in the paint boot so if you're going to put the sill in i'm not going to start painting it immediately i will only start painting it after it's been a few minutes in the paint boot so it has warmed up to the temperature of the paint boot now i typically set the paint boot to about 25 to 30 degrees centigrade uh, right now uh, it's quite cold outside it's only about five degrees centigrade and it rains like hell you can probably hear it uh, but nevertheless, uh, I just turned it on, so now this is heating up. I'm just going to let it go on while we prepare the rest. And you guys probably wonder, what the hell is that box, right? Well, that box is nothing more than a bit of foam insulation material. And inside, I actually have my paint. Always try to get the paint and the subjects that you're going to paint all on the same temperature. And that's why I built this little boot. And this is nothing special. This is just some insulation and a good old radiator in the back. And that's it. I made a thermostat, of course, and I've set it to around 30 degrees centigrade. So now I can let the paint heat up and acclimatize to the temperature in the paint boot. And it's not a good idea to take the paint out of your cabinet in your paint shop and start painting with it when it's cold. So guys, the first thing I'm going to do right now is to clean up the sill. It's been sitting here for a while on the shelf in the shop. So it has collected all kind of dust and debris. So I want to wash it down on the outside and on the inside. It doesn't really matter if you're going to paint the surface or not. It has to be completely clean before you start spraying because otherwise you may get dust and particles into your paint. Uh, for cleaning it down, nothing special, just some warm water, get some detergent from your wife's kitchen and a good sponge, a clean sponge and just wash it off. That's all there is to it. So guys, I just finished washing it down and now I'm going to wet sand it with a grit of 1500. I did already inspect the whole surface uh, for scratches or dents or any area that I might have to repair because you never know with a new panel. 
but it looked good. Um, I'm going to sand it down either with a sanding block, which is a fairly soft block, this one, uh, because I have a lot of uh, different contours, as you can see. Um, I may not always be able to do it with that, but uh, I can also use a, um, let me squeeze it out a bit first, a sponge and put my sanding paper underneath, like so, and then rub. So that's the other option I have uh, to sand. Uh, I don't want to do it really with my fingers, uh, like many of us do, because then you may get little stripes, uh, because that where the pressure of your fingers are. So anyway, let me start with this, and then uh, once I'm done with that, we will put the um, surfacer up. And we just do this to get the shine off. A block doesn't always work, so you might have to use your fingers in certain instances. But always try to keep them as flat as possible. Now this area here doesn't really matter that much because it's going to be covered by the clamshell. I have it now wet sanded and now I'm going to rinse it down again with clean water and then we'll dry it up and degrease it. And actually have a look how good the sanding is. And a good check is always use your hand. That's your best tool to feel how smooth it is. Uh, I can just probably put the surfacer up after we degrease it. But let's see. Oh, it's bad. All right, guys, so I've got the paint boot on temperature. Meanwhile, uh, we sand it down the sill. We washed it down, so now it's time to degrease it. I'm going to use a degreaser uh, or a cleaner. Uh, but before I use that one, I will use a general purpose cellulose thinner to wipe it down. And then I'll use this product to clean it all up. So I have the two products here. I've got the normal cellulose thinner degreaser. That's a good product. I use that for the first rub. And then I'm going to use the second product for the second rub, which is a bit of a better cleaner uh, for all of that. And that should be good enough. Uh, and I hope I have no issues than spraying the sill with the surfacer. And then uh, we're going to place it in the paint boot, the sill, and let it acclimatize, let it come up to temperature. And meanwhile, we'll prepare our surfacer. Soak it, and then we'll clean it. I'm right now preparing the paint boot, guys. Um, I'm taping off the lights because I don't want to have spray on the lights. So um, that's what I do this with a piece of plastic and every so often I will have to renew it. Meanwhile, the paint boot is already at 30 degrees centigrade. So we are about ready to go. Wetting the floor also takes the dust away. I know it's going to dry up pretty fast, but still I'm going to let the sill acclimatize. So guys, uh, we're about to start painting the um, surfacer and I'm going to be using from Chromax the high productive surfacer and uh, obviously I will have to shake it a little bit before we start. The first coat we're going to place on the panel is what we call a high productive surfacer and that is a very good product to level out all the little scratches and all the little things. It's kind of a thick primer. It's a great product. I've got it from Chromax and I'm not going to make a commercial for Chromax, but the point is, if you go for a brand name paint, then you always find tables. And the tables talk about the product, and the tables talk about the gun type that you're going to use. And if you have a 5000B HVLP gun, then you use this column. So different columns for different guns, and then you have the different products. And you have always the, the pressure. So I'm going to be painting with this Protec gun, which is a replica of the SATA. And I'm going to use a 1.4 nozzle and I will paint it at around 2 bar. So that's what I'm going to use. So it's important to mix the paint right. And for this paint, I have the data sheet. Uh, I need seven volumes of paint. I will need one volume of activator and I'm going to need 2.5 volumes of the thinner. Uh, so that all together uh, will then add up to a certain quantity. I will mix it in this pot. And then we should be ready to paint. Other important stuff to know is that my pot live is one hour. So after one hour, the paint is wasted. So I have to get the job done in one hour. Um, spray uh, at a distance of 15 centimeters. Well, that's all right uh, with the kind of 
gravity uh, or suction based cup so it's all the same uh, the pressure is about 20 psi and then i have of course uh, one to three coats that should be okay uh, that depends how much i want to do i can dry sand it after about one hour to 30 minutes depending on the temperature and i guess that should be about it so these are the kind of things guys you need to check uh, because that is important so now let me start mixing it i marked the pot already uh, with some markers so i know exactly how much i need to fill in so let's see if i can get this paint in there that's not going to be that easy i guess so a bit more So you might have noticed that I've prepared the paint in a bucket without a filter and you should always filter your paint but it's always better to stir it all up and mix it all and then filter it and that's what I'm going to do next. There we go and this is the final bucket. So I'm in the paint booth now I'm going to degrease it one more time and then we tag rag it and then we go in to paint it. So now I'm going to tag rag it because that should take all the dust away from it. That looks good. This is looking quite good. I'm quite happy with the performance of the paint boot. That worked out just fine. Um, and now I'm gonna let it dry. The surface is now dried and cured. Uh, we let it in the boot for about an hour at about 30 degrees. It looks quite smooth, I have to say, but now we need to sand it a bit and uh, I'm gonna wet sand it with a grid of 1200. And then we put it back in the paint boot and then we're gonna put the base coat on the real color. Let's see if it's not too early. No, that looks good. That's done. So let's rinse it off. And the best way to check it is with your hand. And it, it really feels good. Right. So I think that this is ready for the base coat. So I'm going to dry it up and then uh, we'll, we'll put the base coat up. So first I'm going to degrease it and then I will tag rag it. And this is the product I use to degrease it. It works real well. So I have had it degreased already. I degreased it again and now we're going to tag rag it with a tag rag to take all the remaining parts of the dust off um, before we start actually painting. Um, like I said before, um, Painting is 90% preparation and 10% painting. It's not always a lot of fun to prepare things, but if you don't, you won't get a good result. So I'm going to let it sit here now and let it warm up. Uh, so it's the same temperature as the spray boot, around 30 degrees centigrade. And meanwhile, I'll prepare the base coat. I'm going to apply two to three base coats. I don't know exactly. And then we'll put the clear lac up afterwards. But I don't think I can do the clear lac today anymore because it needs time to dry. And it's already, let's see, it's already quarter to five, so uh, I might not make it. But anyway, I will put the base coat up now. Our surfacer is now dry and now it's time to apply the color. I'm using again from Chromax, the Centauri 6000 paint. And this is a base coat. I'm gonna apply two to three coats of the base coat. This is blue and that has no strength whatsoever that's just the color after that we'll have to put the clear lac on but right now we're going to go with the color i'm going to apply again uh, this paint based on the information on the data sheet i will do the right mix 
and I will adjust the paint gun according to the table that I have. Uh, I'm using in this case a Salta Jet 5000 BRP. This is this gun right here. And I'm going to apply that specific coat and you can actually look it up Centauri. It's going to be in there somewhere and then you figure out exactly what you're going to need in terms of pressure again. I'm going to paint this on 20 PSI which is about 1.4 kilograms I think or bar and I'm using a 1.3 nozzle on this one. Um, why do I use this gun? This is a more expensive gun. It just creates a better spray, a finer spray and the fan when I spray with it is a bit wider as well than the ProTech one. So um, let, let us mix the paint and get on with it. Before I start spraying the panel, and it doesn't really matter if it was with the surfacer or if it was with the base coat, I always uh, try the pattern out. And here you see the pattern. That was the first pattern of the uh, surfacer, and it wasn't absolutely right. You see, it was a bit thin, and then I moved it and I corrected it to that one. That was my final pattern. So that's why I adjust on how I adjust my spray gun. This, the blue stuff, was for the base coat. Um, and I did basically the same thing. And you can see that the fan out is a lot bigger than what you would have on the surface. The surfacer was painted with a ProTac paint gun and the base coat was painted with a, a SATA 5000. So that's a bit of a difference. So we finished up the base coat and I placed about three layers and I think it looks quite nice. Um, it went very smoothly and I'm really pleased with the SATA 5000 gun. It's the RP. It is not an HVLP what I initially tended to use. But this looks quite good and it's a very smooth finish. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I have placed three layers of base coat and it looks real nice. It's now dried up. I let it dry overnight and now it's time to put the clear on. Now the base coat, the color itself, is only color and it does not provide you with any protection whatsoever. It is just color. It is the actual clear lac that I'm going to put on now that's going to give you all the protection. So before we start doing that, um, we're going <clears> to... <throat> Tag ragged again, uh, and tag ragging, guys, uh, just in case you don't know, is nothing more than a piece of cloth which is a bit sticky, and it's called tag rag. And the first time I came across it, I said, like, I mean, what the hell is that? But now I know what it is. So it is a piece of sticky cloth that you use to wipe over the surface, and it will take all the dust and all the small particles off as it sticks to the cloth. Our base coat is on and it's dry, so now it's time to apply the clear uh, lac onto it. And I'm going to apply about two to three layers of clear lac. And I am actually having the VR1120 Value Clear VOC uh, clear lac from Chromax. And the paint gun I'm going to use again is going to be the SATA, the SATA 5000 BRP. And if I look that up on that table, then I know exactly the, the pressure I need to spray it with. So it's between 1.8 and 2.2 bar. So I'm going to go for about 2 bar, I would say. And then the jet I need on it, or this, the nozzle, is 1.3 to 1.4. And on the one I have right here, it's a 1.3. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm just going to prepare that paint and mix it with the um, activator. And off we go and we start painting that part. So we're going to prepare the varnish or the clear layer from Chromax. It's the VR1120 and I'm going to need some activator. The ratio for that one is a 2 to 1. So two parts paint, one part uh, activator. I shouldn't be saying paint, I should be say varnish or clear coat. So let's uh, start doing that. I mixed the uh, clear coat, two parts clear coat and one part activator. And now we're just going to stir it well and then we'll pour it into the uh, paint cup uh, and I'm going to use for that a filter. The open time on this mixture is about an hour and a half to two hours so you don't nearly need to rush but you need to keep that always in mind. So let's open up the paint cup and then we can pour it in. Now I always use a filter 
when I pour things into um, my paint gun, not before. I'm going to give it about two minutes and then I'll do the last coat on it. I just placed the last layer of clear and now I'm going to let it dry and I've set the paint boot to about 30 degrees centigrade and I'm going to let it sit there for a couple of hours so it can cure nicely. Um, it looks real nice, I have to say. It's shiny, it's perfect. I have, and I have to be honest with you, one or two small dust particles, but nothing really major. I don't know where they came from, but then again, this is not a professional paint boot. And I really think this really worked out very well. Let me give you a little bit of a close up, and I also will show you the little dust spot that I have, but I think I can buff it out. So um, let's have a look. Now, I used, as you have seen, different paint guns. I used the ProTac and I used the SATA 5000. The ProTac is a $150 paint gun, the SATA is a $500 paint gun. And I have to say, the difference is not that big. Certainly not on base coat and on primers. Uh, I would say even that the uh, ProTac is quite good uh, compared to the SATA, and the SATA, of course, excels, but for those very basic paints, it's good enough. For the clear coat, I would certainly go for a better gun. The SATA 5000 RP that I have did a real good job. It really works nice and easy. But overall, I'm happy with both of them. Now, as you might have noticed, that's the first time I have used, I'm have i using the paint boot. So it's a bit kind of the maiden voyage of my paint boot. And um, I think it worked quite well. I have almost no dust. I have two or three little small little dust particles probably coming off my own clothing. Um, but for the rest it was good. Uh, if I had to change anything on the paint boot, I would probably put a bigger filter up. I would probably double the size. Uh, although it worked out just fine during this video and during this effort, but I can imagine if you have to paint bigger surfaces, then you might have a little bit of an issue maybe by too much buildup of uh, fumes. But then again, that was never the intent of this paint boot anyway, to big a full car. And for the rest, I think this was uh, quite exciting. Uh, I am not a professional painter. Uh, the last time I painted was something like 25 years ago. So I'm a novice. But what I learned is that if you follow all the instructions that are provided on the data sheets for the paint and all the different products and the paint guns, then you will achieve a good result. And you'll see that as soon as I take the sill out of the boot, I will mount it back on the Lotus Elise. So if you want to see how good the sill is, you'll have to check my next video on mounting the sill on the Lotus Elise. Now guys, thank you so much for watching and please by all means provide comments, recommendations because I know there's plenty of people amongst you that are really experienced painters and car body repair guys. I am not. I'm a do-it-yourself guy. Uh, I do things the way I do and I'm always willing to learn from you and in the past I received already so many good comments and tips, things that I didn't think about. So I'm really thankful to you uh, for sharing that with us and the whole community. So thank you again and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. <clears throat>